So we create these digital twins from ultrasound images, which are standard of care in obstetrics. And I like the digital twins because it helps me collaborate with people. When I can bring up a digital replica of what they see in the clinic, we can start to talk and we can start to discover together. We're starting a new series of conversations about Columbia. There is still so much we can all learn about our remarkable institution. The idea is to focus on our faculty and other community members who are doing world-class work. I'm here with Kristen Myers, a professor of mechanical engineering at Columbia School of Engineering. She works at the intersection of engineering and medicine, studying the biomechanics of the female reproductive system. The goal is to better understand the mechanics of pregnancy and prevent dangerous complications like preterm births. Meyer's group is one of only a few engineering teams in the world doing this kind of work. Can you talk about digital twins? How do those help your research and what does it mean for this project generally? Digital twins are great. It's, it's a tool we've used in engineering for decades. And like you said, digital twins are digital replications of something in the physical world. So, you know, when I was in an undergraduate mechanical engineer, uh, we learned how to do this again for structures of our built world. You can think of bridges, et cetera. Now for the human body, can I make a digital twin so I can understand how that uterus grows and stretches, how the cervix might open too soon or too fast? Like what's the physics behind that? So we create these digital twins from ultrasound images, which are standard of care in obstetrics. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like the digital twins because it helps me collaborate with people. Mm -hmm. I'm a visual person mm -hmm. and my doctors I work with um, across the street, incredibly smart. They're incredibly busy. Yeah. We have two different types of training, but when I can bring up a digital replica of what they see in the clinic, we can start to talk and we can start to discover together. And that's really a powerful thing. How often do you find, is there a gap between what you see and predict with the digital twin mm -hmm. and what happens in real life? All the, mean, time. Kind of <laughs> All the time. Constantly changing. It's constantly changing. Yeah. Um, well, one, the uterus and the cervix is an incredibly adaptive system. Yeah. So there's a lot of really, I say nonlinear phenomenon. It's really hard. And also in this field of women's health, women's health engineering or innovation, there's no data. Hmm. There yeah. simply is no data. I, there's not a book that I can look up or a publication because um, no one has thought to make a digital twin of the uterus and the cervix. Yeah. Um, so we're one of the first people to start atlasing the structure function properties so that we can inform these physical models so that we can invent new things and that we can de-risk ideas. You've talked about this already a little bit, but Columbia and collaboration. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to be able to collaborate with, you know, all of the doctors and medical researchers up here and, and others across the institution? Yeah, it's it's incredibly meaningful. Um, so I work across the street um, with Columbia doctors and obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, we have a there's a preterm birth prevention center that my clinical colleague, Dr. Morella Murad heads. Um, and she really wants to infuse research-based clinical practices. Mm -hmm. um, and this is really important to her. So we do a lot of collaboration to understand, can we invent new research tools to get that data? Mm -hmm. Can we do it in a, a better way, a more informative way? Is there somehow, and I, I like to sort of like, it's really important for me to be in the clinic room or across the street at the, at the medical center, but as an engineer, I want to make it easier for her job so that she can see better and do her job better and that we can collect data. Have you seen in the time you've been working on the, the twins and all of your research that, that there's predictive value now, for example, and what somebody might see in a scan Yeah, and what that might mean for a possible premature? Right, a diagnostic. Yep. And that is, that is our end goal. Yeah. Can we have a diagnostic to say, hey, you're at risk for preterm birth. Mm -hmm. And maybe even be predictive, like actually it's gonna come at 23 weeks or 28 weeks, or actually don't worry, I think it's gonna be 37 weeks. Mm -hmm. Cause right now the standard of care is like wait and see, yeah. you take obstetric history. Yeah. Um, there are some measurements that are now coming online, which is great based on research. 
Um, so we hope, and I, and I sometimes I say, I want to be the one to solve preterm birth. I think it's going to be my students who solve it um, along with our clinicians. But I, I really want to have a tool based on an ultrasound and a digital twin and have this predictive and, and inform the patient too, both patient caregiver relationship, like what is going to happen to my pregnancy? What do you find most gratifying about this institution? My students, 100%. Second, my collaborators. So I work with somebody in systems biology who is understanding the vaginal microbiome and how it's connected to spontaneous preterm birth. And so we started working together. And again, I'm a mechanical engineer. What does the vaginal microbiome have to do with anything? And so again, just meeting and meeting and having our students talk and just start throw ideas at the wall that kind of sound a little wild. Yeah. But we started this line of work. We're like, well, the cervix is surrounded by this microbiome. So how does it affect the mechanics? And so can we build a test where we can simulate that environment? And we started to do that. And I started to look at my work differently. You know, I've been studying the cervix for 20 years. Okay. I've atlased it from different patients mm -hmm. um, that we get from hysterectomy um, samples. Uh, and so now that I've reframed how I look at it, we are discovering new things. And I think it's really important that my laboratory is here, again, nestled between systems biology and obstetrics and gynecology. You know, we can go and see, we can talk to the physicians, we can talk to the scientists um, and invent something. I love when people visit the laboratory. <laughs> well, thank you for letting us drop in. You're welcome.